All right, here I am with Gord Edgar from Sunmark. <laughs> Gord's going to tell us about the Sunbar composting toilets. Take it away. Oh, thank you. Sunmar's been making composting toilets now for over 30 years, and they're sold internationally. Our design is based on the rotating drum. What makes any composting toilet work is the microbes, aerobic microbes. Anaerobic microbes are found in pit privies and uh, septic systems. They produce foul-smelling gases we call sewer gases as a byproduct of the composting process. By using aerobic microbes, we eliminate those offensive odors and have clean compost. The compost pile is housed in a rotating drum, and this tosses and it's aerated by turning this handle. This will toss and turn the compost pile over and over, much in the same way uh, clothes will be tossed up over and over in a tumble dryer. This means that 100% of the compost pile is getting aerated. The bulking material that goes inside the, uh, the drum and houses a compost pile is a combination of peat moss and hemp stock. The peat moss is there to retain the moisture needed for composting, and the hemp stock is there to bulk up the mix and create pockets of air within the pile so that the microbes can sustain themselves when the toilet is not used. Um, our, the microbes require carbon and nitrogen. Our, our poop is full of nitrogen and the bulking material and regular toilet paper provide a great source of carbon. So Charmin, Cottonelle, whatever your favorite brand is, it's actually beneficial for the composting process to be using regular toilet paper. Now, in addition to mixing and aerating the pile when you turn the handle to mix the, the drum, you're also distributing the moisture throughout the pile. Composting requires 40 to 60 percent moisture. Inside this drum, it's difficult to see, but there is a graded opening just at the back, and excess liquids will drain through that liquid, through that grate, to a separate area in the toilet where they'll be evaporated off. In the case, this is a non-electric toilet and liquids will evaporate naturally. In the case of our electric models, there is a built-in heater into the floor of the unit that works on a thermostat and will evaporate uh, 6.5 liters per day. This means that it's capable of evaporating all the liquid going into the, into the toilet and can operate as a completely and totally self-contained unit. So you were saying that uh, compost requires 40 to 60 percent moisture? Correct. So that's a desirable level. Yes. But most people end up putting more moisture in as a result of the way we use the toilet. Correct. How much we drink. So more fluid goes in and that becomes the, the more challenging material to eliminate. Is that true? Well, yes, in general. And as I say, the far design, the compost pile is self-regulating in the amount of moisture that it will retain. So it's a very simple system, and in terms of maintenance, when the toilet is in use, you will uh, mix and aerate the pile every other day. So for instance, if it was being used on a weekend vacation basis, you would mix and aerate the pile Friday when you arrive, and then Sunday before you leave. And uh, after every bowel movement, you add a scoop of the bulk of the tea. Or as our customers say, if you poop, you add a scoop, and if you pee, you let the pee. Now, if you're using this on a daily basis, how many people roughly would this one take care of? This uh, is a non-electric model, and it would do a family of three on a full-time residential basis as the only toilet the family had access to. Okay, so this is the Excel and E. Correct. Okay. Um, now, in terms of removing the, uh, the compost, what you'll find is the truck only turns in one direction. And the lid inside is hinged on one side, so as it turns, it will be closing. By pulling this pin, you unlock the drum, and it will allow the drum to turn in reverse, the door will stay open, and compost will automatically drop into this finishing room. The handle will lock into position, and the toilet will continue to be used. This area is going to supply is an isolated area, where compost will not become contaminated with any new liquids or material, and it sits here for uh, a minimum of one month to finish. Well, this is the finishing period, so how often do we do this reverse? 
if, uh, if the toilet is being used on a full-time residential basis, we would remove compost from it once every three months. If it was being used on a weekend vacation basis, it would be once a year. And the reason you don't have to empty compost from it that often is the, the majority, the bulk of our poop is water. So the majority of waste entering the toilet will be evaporated off. When you spin this to dump it into the finish, there must be some fresh material in there. How, how is that dealt with? Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's nothing to sort finished uh, compost from new waste. Uh, and that is the reason why material sits in the finishing tray for at least 30 days, to make sure that everything is composted down. In most cases, a Sunmar owner would reverse roll the drum and absolutely forget about it, and just empty the tray just prior to, uh, to repeating the process. Now, the compost that comes out of here, all Sunmar toilets, are tested and listed with the National Sanitation Foundation, and you can go to nsf.org to see that listing, and every other toilet that meets the standard as well. Um, they test these the compost produced by our toilets to ensure that it's safe to handle and good for the garden. The standard they use is 200 MPN, which stands for most probable love for bacteria. That's the bad stuff that makes us sick. The XL uh, uh, testing the, on the electric bottle actually came out to 27 MPN. So in addition to testing the, uh, the compost in the laboratory, they also go out and collect field samples from Sunmar owners to make sure that the product operates in the field the same way it operates in the lab. Yep. Now in terms of installation, uh, it's very simple. Our self-contained units arrive fully assembled, as you see it here. There is a vent stack to hook up. In the case of our non-electric models, it's a four-inch stack that's installed straight. And the breeze passing over the top of the stack is what creates the problem. In the case of our uh, robbers, we actually have a diffuser. Uh, we don't use a wind turbine of any kind because if there is no wind, that will actually block the venting. Uh, a diffuser has an outer rim that will channel rain away from the vent stack so it won't fill up the toilet. Uh, in the case of uh, if you have downdrafting situations or you're in an area with interrupted airflow, there is a 12 volt fan that draws 1.4 watts per hour and will have a very minor impact on the PV system or can easily run off the runoff charge back. Our electric models have a built-in electric fan in the back and use a two-inch vent stack that can have multiple vents in its installation. So it offers a few and the electric model as well is the key. Correct. the power draw on an electric An electric on average will draw 150 watts per hour. And the heater is the big problem. Generating heat with electricity is, well, it's very inefficient. If you're, grid, if you're getting your electricity from a grid type source, a power company, it's a minuscule cost. If you have a PV system, you're best to go to the toilet system. The composting process itself is biological. The electric features are just PV systems. Mother Nature is really the one who's all of them. Great. Well, thank you, Gordon. My pleasure. <laughs>